Hey guys! Just how attentive are you? Very, you say? Hmm, then perhaps you're up for a bit of a challenge. You'll need to follow the movements of a ball with your eyes and predict where it'll appear next. Got it? Great! Oh, here's the ball! Whoops! Just as I suspected. I can't believe it! You're kidding! Whoops! Fancy that! Here it is! Whoa! Didn't see that coming! Well, that was unexpected. Well, good morning, STF kids, and welcome back to week 15. Did I get that right? I'm so glad that you've joined me again this week, and you've been learning a lot through this chronological study through the Bible. Now, I don't know about you, but it is real hot here in Sable Beach this morning, and I've already cooled off in the pool, hence the crazy hair, um, and I'm just wondering what are some ways that you've been staying cool this weekend, because it's been a hot one. On the count of three, I want you to shout out all the ways that you've been keeping cool, okay? One, two, three. Awesome. That sounds like you guys have been having a lot of fun, but also staying cool. Um, one of my favorite things to eat when it's this hot are freezies. Don't know if you have those in your freezer, but my daughter Adeline just loves freezies. Um, must get it from her mother. Anyways, enough about the weather. Um, well, just one more thing, actually. Um, just yesterday from the heat, when I walked across the pavement, my sandals actually melted. Check it out. Just kidding. They actually didn't. I googled that. Um, <laughs> Really, enough about the weather this time. Um, but as we remember what we've been talking about through this book of Genesis, there's been three people that have kind of been the center of a lot of our stories. Their names were Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, now, Jacob had another name. Do you remember what it was? That's right, Israel. And do you remember how many sons Jacob had, or Israel, as if we call him by his other name, 12. Remember that family picture that you drew a couple weeks ago? He had 12 sons. And who was Jacob's favorite? Joseph, which we've been talking about. And Joseph's brothers were jealous of him, remember? They wanted to kill him, 
But instead of killing him, their brother sold him as a slave into Egypt. So Joseph was taken to Egypt where he worked for an important official. And what was his name? That's right, Pharaoh. And Joseph was then accused of doing something that he didn't actually do, and he was put into prison. So Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream and said that there was going to be a time of plenty, and then there was going to be a time where there's going to be a famine, where there wasn't going to be any food, or there's going to be very little food. So then Pharaoh made Joseph second in command of all Egypt. So he went from being sold by his brothers to being second in command in all of Egypt. But did you guys hear that? Oh no. Speaking of all this food, I'm getting real hungry. I think it's time for a snack. Um, are you guys hungry? Okay, why don't you come with me and we're gonna, we're gonna find a snack. Whoop. Okay, we're on our way to go find a snack. To the kitchen we go. Tell me what your favorite kind of snack is. Nice and loud, I can't hear you. Over my flip flops on the floor. Oh, popsicles. No, that's, that's gotta be something else. What else do you think we're gonna find in the fridge for a snack? Oh guys, my stomach is just growling. All right, here we are at the fridge. Dun, 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 oh. oh no. Oh no. There is no food. What are we gonna do? I'm so hungry. Oh no, do you guys see any food? No food, no food. There's coffee, but that's gross. Oh man. Guys, I hope, I hope we aren't experiencing one of those times like, like Joseph was with the famine. Can you help me find some food? Oh, hey, look what I found here. There's a few things left, but I don't think we're gonna be able to survive just on freezies. Oh man, I wonder what Joseph did. We better check it out. Jacob and his family were in trouble. They did not have enough food to eat. No one had enough food to eat. So when Jacob learned that there was food in Egypt, he sent 10 of his sons to buy some grain. His son Benjamin stayed home. In Egypt, Joseph was in charge of giving out food. The brothers came to him and bowed down. Joseph knew who they were, but they did not recognize him. Joseph remembered his dreams of his brothers bowing down to him. Those dreams from long before were coming true. Joseph decided to test his brothers. I think you are spies, Joseph told them. You are here to spy on the land. But the brothers said, no, we are not spies, we are brothers. There were 12 of us, but our youngest brother is at home with our father and another brother is dead. Joseph put his brothers in prison for three days. Then he said, bring your youngest brother back to me to prove that you are not spies, but one of you must stay here. The brothers went home with food for their families and one of them stayed in Egypt they told their father everything that had happened, and their father was very upset. But when all the food was gone, Jacob asked his sons to go back to Egypt. So the brothers returned to Egypt with their brother, Benjamin. They took money to pay for their food, and they took a special gift for Joseph. Joseph invited all of the brothers to his home for a meal. After the meal, Joseph sent away all of his attendants. He cried and told his brothers, I am Joseph, your brother. You sold me into Egypt, but do not be afraid. God sent me here so I could save your people, a remnant from the famine. Joseph told his brothers to go home and bring their families back to Egypt where they would have enough food. On the way to Egypt, God spoke to Jacob in a vision. A vision is like a dream, but Jacob was awake. God said, do not be afraid to go down to Egypt 
for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also bring you back to this land. Jacob's family was blessed in Egypt, but Jacob got older and died. Now Joseph's brothers were afraid Joseph would punish them for what they did to him. Oh no! Joseph said, you planned evil against me. God planned it for good, so many people could live. Then Joseph comforted his brothers and spoke kindly to them. God had a plan for Joseph's life. He allowed Joseph to suffer, to rescue a whole nation. In a greater way, God planned for Jesus to suffer so that many people from all nations would be saved from sin. Mm, that is pretty tasty. But I must say, Probably not going to get rid of the hunger pains. Um, good news though. I did talk to my husband Ken and he assured me that there's not a famine in the land, but that he just hasn't had time to go to the grocery store over the last few days. So we're going to have food again someday soon. So I guess for now we'll just eat freezies. I mean, what's wrong with that? Um, did you realize something that happened in our story today though, when you watched that video? Joseph's dream actually came true. Remember the one that he had many years before when his brothers were really jealous and he said that they were going to bow down to him. It actually came true. Many years later, his family comes to Egypt and they actually bow down to Joseph. Because remember now, Joseph is one of the second in command in all of Egypt. And so Joseph... He could have been really mean to his brothers. He could have been uh, like, look at what you did and he's gonna pay them back for what they've done. But actually, Joseph didn't do that. He tested them, but Joseph showed kindness. He could have refused them food. He could have treated them badly, but he chose to forgive them and he chose to show kindness, which is a great example for us. But I have a question for you. Do you think that Joseph's brothers should have been punished for the things that they had done to Joseph many years before? I mean, that's a good question. And I think Pastor Brian can help us with that. So let's check it out. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Julian from Miami, Florida asks, My sister broke my favorite toy car last week. She said she was sorry, but it didn't seem fair to just forgive her. She didn't even get in trouble. Why shouldn't she be punished for what she did? Julian, that's a hard situation. I can understand how you feel there. And you know, it really reminds me of the Bible study today that we looked at Joseph forgiving his brothers. And Joseph had gone through a really difficult time, didn't he? I mean, his brothers did some really terrible things to him. They, what they did was evil. And yet he forgave them in the end because he saw that God was active even through what they did, that God brought good through it. And so he knew that God wanted him to forgive his brothers and that's what he did. The main reason why we are to forgive others is because God has forgiven us and that we should want to forgive others even when they do things wrong to us because we love them and we know that God loves them as well. And so that's why we forgive. So how can we show others we love them as we forgive them? Hungry, hungry, hippo! Hungry, hungry, hippo! Hungry, hungry, hippo! How oh, this famine in Egypt has got this hippo hungry! And somebody told me that underneath these cups is some food. It appears, though, that maybe it's also a game that maybe has something to do with the memory verse. I don't know. Well, this hippo is hungry if you didn't pick it up. And uh, yeah, like I said, this famine in Egypt, whoo, it is not for the faint at heart. Um, so how about we do this? I see that maybe uh, we should mix these up a little bit. So I think underneath some of these cups, 
is some food items and here's how it's gonna work. I think that I'm gonna pick two cups, which is gonna eliminate the words on the front of the cup from the verse, but I get to eat whatever is underneath those two cups, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna mix them up a little bit so uh, I just don't know what I'm gonna get. Okay, uh, that seems good. What do you think, kids? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna start off by picking this one. Ooh, hippos don't really like lemons, but when you're this hungry, I guess it'll do. Uh, so we're gonna eliminate Hosea 13.4 from our verse, as well as, hmm, what about this one? Oh no, a prune. I also do not like prunes. Oh boy, a prune and a lemon together, oh boy. Uh, we're also gonna eliminate I am the, okay? Uh, first of all though, I guess I need to eat. But when you're hungry, you can't complain, okay? Well, do I, am I allowed to take off some of the rind here? Oh, juicy lemon, it's so tart. Okay, hum, 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 hungry, hungry. Oh boy, that's something special. I have a garbage hat. I was not hungry enough for that. Oh boy, not good. The famine's gonna have to be a little longer for me to wanna eat that. Okay, time for your part of the challenge. See if you can uphold. Uh, verse is gonna come up on your screen. These words are going to be eliminated. Here we go, one, two, three. I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. You know no God but me, and besides me, there is no savior. Hosea 13, four. Okay, let's, let's put those over there. What do you think I'm gonna get this time? Hopefully something delicious, because that, not good. Not good, okay, let's go with this one. Oh no, can I pick a different one? Oh no, no, like the, the one thing in this world that I hate the most is underneath that cup. Okay, a tomato. Oh, all right, so I've got a tomato, but the words and besides me are going to come out. Okay, so I've got my tomato, and let's go with this one. Oh, chickpeas. Who picked this game? These are gross. Okay, the words, you know, no. You know, no, that's kind of a tongue twister. All right, this hungry hippo. Here we go, chickpeas and tomato. Count down with me, three, two, one. Oh, oh God, that's so gross. Oh, so good. Uh, no, no. no go. Tomato, no. Oh, that was worse than the prune and lemon. Can't do it. All right, let's try and read the verse together. One, two, three. I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. You know no God but me, and besides me, there is no savior. Hosea 13, four. All right, yum, 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 yum. Two more, two more. Let's put these way over here. Woo. Uh, all right, how about this one? Applesauce, mmm, that sounds delicious. Uh, okay, oh, the words God but me. And what about this one? Oh, a marshmallow. That also sounds delicious. Mm. All right, here we go. Count down with me in three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Is there more where that came from? Mm -hmm. well, excuse the mess. Us hippos aren't very clean when we eat. All right, mm. 
I think I'm going to save that for later. Um, let's read the verse together. Three, two, one. I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. You know no God but me, and besides me, there is no Savior. Hosea 13, 4. Mm. Mm. Yummy. Well, this hungry hippo, um, I think is feeling a little less hungry, but I heard the word on the street that if you guys learn this memory verse over the next few weeks, you get to slime Jenna in a drive-by sliming at her house, which sounds like a lot of fun. Do you think that, that she'd mind if I showed up? I mean, us hippos don't like to miss out on the fun, if you know what I mean. Um, anyway, so practice those verses because I would love to watch Jenna get slimed. Um, yeah, so practice, send a video to the SCF Kids Ministry page of you saying the verse, no cheating. Uh, and you can do a drive-by sliming of Jenna the first week of August. It's going to be fantastic. Um, well, you know what you like to do after a nice big meal? <sighs> Take a nice big nap. So I think I'm going to have to go, guys, because this hungry, hungry hippo is now a tired, tired hippo. Tired, tired hippo. God puts rulers in their place. And ultimately, he is the ruler of everything. And we saw in today's story how God had sent Joseph to Egypt to accomplish a certain plan that he had for him. And we don't always understand why God lets these things happen. But we do know that God is at work and that God is good. So together, let's walk in God's plan for us. Let's sing. <laughs> stars caught fire even before the earth and sky were made you had a purpose and a plan for my life you held my heart and you knew my name so i will walk in the plans that you have for me i will follow trust in the way no matter where this journey To show the world the love of God Fearfully and wonderfully created We're all masterpieces To show the world the love of God Fearfully and wonderfully created We're all masterpieces To show the world the love of God I will walk in the plans that you have for me I will follow Trust and obey I will walk in the plans that you have for me I will follow Trust and obey No matter where this journey may lead me I know you are good You are good always I will walk in the plans that you have for me I will follow Trust and obey Good.
do things right But I make the wrong choice sometimes And you forgive me No one knows me, God, like you You see who I am, not what I do And you forgive me life wasn't easy. He was falsely accused of a crime, which led him to prison. He was mistreated, he was made fun of, and he was rejected by his own family. But God had a plan for Joseph's life. He allowed Joseph to suffer so that a whole nation could be saved from a famine. And many years later, Jesus also was mistreated. He was made fun of, and he was rejected by his own people. Jesus was falsely accused of a crime which led to his death on the cross. And in even a greater way, God planned for Jesus to suffer so that many people from all nations could be saved from sin. He did this for me and for you. Let's pray. God, thank you for today and thank you for these kids that are tuning in and, and learning and wanting to grow in the relationship with you and learning these stories, um, God, that started many years ago, but are, are so much and it's so important for us here today. And God, we thank you for Joseph's example of forgiveness, but God, ultimately we thank you for Jesus. And even though he was mistreated and made fun of and he was rejected by his own people, God, that he died willingly for us. And we thank you that he offers us forgiveness for all of the wrong things that we have done in our life. God, that we can be forgiven and one day live in heaven with you. So we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you um, for this life of Joseph that is such a great example for us. And God, would we forgive those who do wrong to us? And would we be quick um, God, to forgive them and just be with us this week and go with us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen.